Session 100 Brothers and Sisters, Assalamu Alaikum Bismillah Rahman Rahim We begin with the name of Allah who is most gracious and merciful Na'amadahu nusalli ala rasulihil kareem And we begin with blessings on Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him the last and the final Prophet I begin today with the repetition of the first para of the last session because it is important. Bismillah. We believe there is one Allah and no other God worthy of worship because we believe Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he told us so. We believe in the Quran to be the word of Allah because the Prophet said so. We also believe in the accountability hereafter, for he told us so. Our entire religion hinges, rests on the word of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and the Muslims are required to love and respect the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, more than they respect their parents, more than they love their children, and their own selves. The companions were prepared to die rather than Muhammad be given a pinprick. The companions were prepared to die rather than Muhammad, peace be upon him, be given a pinprick. We, we follow him on the orders of Allah, for he was a walking Quran, Quran incarnate, the Quran in human form and because we know that only he would earn the pleasure of Allah who follows the Prophet in his beliefs, deeds, values, general appearance, habits, likes and dislikes and in his nature. I believe, I repeat my apologies uh, because we know that only he would earn the pleasure of Allah who follows the Prophet in his beliefs, deeds, values, general appearance, habits, likes and dislikes, and in his nature also. Infallibility, no probability of making a mistake of the Prophet, respecting and loving him are the foundations on which our faith in Him and Allah are structured, are based. The Prophet said, even if Musa Moses was to come in this world again, he'd have no choice but to follow my way. He'd have no choice but to follow my way. Riyazul Salihin. Now we see that the Prophet is the messenger of Allah, is the messenger of Allah, is established, dictated by Allah in Quran in certain verses, which I shall read out to you. First, Surah, uh, 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 surah 4, Nisa, verse 80. Man yati rasoola faqad ata'udla wa man tawalla famar sanna ka lahim hafiza. Translation, he who obeys the Prophet وسلم, obeys Allah and the one who turns away, then don't force him. We haven't appointed you a warden over them. Now, Surah 4 and Nisa verse 64, Translation, and we didn't send any prophet but to be obeyed by the order of Allah. Uh, another now was Surah 4 and Nisa verse 69, the translation only. And he who obeys Allah and obeys his prophet, and he who obeys Allah and obeys his prophet, so these are with those who have been rewarded, elevated, honored, by Allah, and they are among the Siddiqs, the truthful, martyrs, 
and the righteous, and their association is blessed. Surah 4, Nisa, verse 115. Anyone who opposes the Prophet after guidance has been plainly conveyed to him and diversifies, changes his way, deeds, doings from that of the Prophet, peace be upon him, and follows a path at variation different from that of the faithful believers, that is the companions, we will leave him, allow him to go on that very path where he has turned, headed, and ultimately will put him in the hell, which is an evil refuge. Now we begin with certain verses, uh, ahadith of the Prophet, and in that I shall begin with the Prophet's peace be upon him said, is reported to have stated, my entire ummah would enter heaven except the one who has refused to go to heaven. He's, I repeat, he said, to, stated, my entire ummah would enter the heaven except the one who has refused to go to heaven. The companions inquired, O Prophet of Allah, who would be the ill-fated who refuses to go to heaven? The Prophet said, He who obeys me, follows my sunnah, will enter the heaven, and he who disobeyed, he who has disobeyed me, not followed my sunnah, definitely then he has refused to go to heaven himself. Excuse me. I repeat, he who obeys me, follows my sunnah, will enter the heaven, and he who has disobeyed me, not followed my sunnah, definitely then he has refused to go to heaven himself. Bukhari. The Prophet, peace be upon him, is reported to have stated, lifting his finger, uh, uh, lifting his finger and the, clo uh, and the close, closest to it, his forefinger, my apologies, lifting his forefinger and the one closest to it, he who re offers, recites the rood on myself, extensively would be as close to me in heaven as this. He repeated, he who offers, recites, yeah, I repeat my apologies, I repeat, he who offers, recites the rood on myself extensively would be as close to me in heaven as this. The two close fingers. The Prophet stated, peace be upon him, he who revives my sunnah at a time when it is running, dying off, shall be rewarded with reward equivalent to a hundred believers who have laid down their lives, fighting in the way of Allah. I repeat, the Prophet said, He who revives my sunnah at a time when it is running, dying off, shall be rewarded with the reward equivalent to a hundred believers who have laid down their lives, fighting in the way of Allah. Marvel the Hadith. The Prophet said, There will be a time when holding to my sunnah would be like holding fire in one's naked hands. He said, There will be a time when holding to my sunnah would be like holding fire in one's naked hands. Marvel the Hadith. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Every man would be raised with the people he resembles. He said, Every man would be raised with the people he resembles. And the details of resemblances would be in belief, values, in morals, intellectual orientation, appearance, likes and dislikes, and choices and styles. That is the memesis, according to Arnold J. Tanbe. Allah does, doesn't like his followers to resemble the disbelievers. Allah doesn't like his followers to resemble the disbelievers. The Prophet, peace be upon him, was very mindful of keeping the subservient, the subservients of Allah distinct 
from disbelievers, from keeping the Muslims distinct from the disbelievers. The Prophet peace be upon him said, he who follows my sunnah makes me live and he who disregards my sunnah makes me die. He who follows my sunnah, I repeat, he said, he who follows my sunnah makes me live and he who disregards my sunnah makes me die. Masnad Ahmad. The Prophet peace be upon him said, only those would be blessed who follow my way, Sunnah, and the way of my companions, his die-hard followers. So at Bukhari, Muslim, Trimzi, Mishkan, the Prophet said, only those would be blessed who follow my way, that is my Sunnah, and the way of my companions, the die, his die-hard followers. Bukhari, Muslim, Trimzi, Mishkan. He stated, get rid of love for this world, worldly life, and hatred, fear of death. He said, get rid of love for this world, worldly life, and hatred, and hatred, fear of death. Losses in life and property cannot deter the Muslims, can't make them buckle, bow to the wishes, to the wishes of the enemies. The Prophet said, the eyes, the eyes shed tears, the heart is in remorse, intensely sad, and we express with tongue those words only which please our Rabb, and we express with the tongue those words only which please our Rabb. Trimzi. The Prophet, peace be upon him, stated, is reported to have said, man shall be with those whom he loves in the hereafter. Man shall be with those whom he loves in the hereafter. Tafsir Ibn Qasir. The Prophet said, not a single day, not a single day should pass over the Muslims when they are without a caliph, Muslim. He said, not a single day should pass over the Muslims when they are without a caliph, Muslim. The Prophet said, I am leaving two things with you. I am leaving two things with you as long as you hold them tight. That is, as long as you act upon them, you will never be misguided, never lose your way. These are the Book of God, Sunnah of the Prophet. These are the Book of God, the Sunnah of the Prophet. Ibn Umar Ta'ala stated that the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, he, he who resembles any people is from those people, Abu Dawud. He who resembles any people is from those people, Abu Dawud. Now, uh, his uh, uh, sayings regarding political military sayings. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, The grinding stone of Islam is cyclic. Turn to the direction the Quran turns. That is, follow the Quran strictly. Follow the Quran strictly. Be careful. Quran and political military power will be separated. Those in power would not follow, would disregard, leave Quran. Beware, don't leave Quran. Beware, don't leave Quran. There will be rulers in the future who will take decisions about you. If you obey them, they'll mislead you away from the right path. And if you disobey them, they'll effectuate your death. The companions inquired, O Prophet, then what should we do? The Prophet said, Do just as the true followers our Prophet Isa, Jesus did. They were cut with saws, crucified. Rather than living in disobedience of Allah, it's better that one obeys Allah and gives his life, dies in the process 
of obeying the orders of Allah and dies in the process of obeying the orders of Allah. In all the books of Ahadith. When your rulers are good people and when your affluent people are magnanimous and spend in the way of Allah and when your collective matters are decided through mutual consultations, the surface of the earth life is better than being under the ground death. And when your Amis and rulers are characterless people and the affluent of your society worship money and are miserly and when your affairs in, are in the hands of your wives and when your affairs are in the hands of your wives, women, then being under the ground, death is better for you than the face of the earth, life, Trimsi. When in trouble, as stated by the Prophet, we must find the remedy through Qur'an. We must find the remedy through Qur'an. Surah uh, 42, Ashura verse 30, translation. The afflictions that befell you are the Qur'an states. When as stated, when in trouble, you must find remedy through Qur'an. So the Qur'anic verse, relevant verse, the afflictions that befell you are the retribution of you earned with your own hands, your own doings, misdeeds, and whereas Allah forgives a lot of sins which have gone unpunished. I repeat, the afflictions that befell you are the retribution of what you earned with your own hand, with your hands, your own doings, misdeeds, and whereas Allah forgives a lot of sins which have gone unpunished. Dress The Prophet also forbade men and women wearing clothes, dresses that make them resemble the opposite sex. Once someone informed Hazrat Aisha Razila that there was a woman who wears shoes like those of men, that there is a woman who wears shoes like those of men. Knowing this, the Prophet cursed such women who try to behave like men. Knowing this, the Prophet, peace be upon him, cursed such women who try to behave like men. Muttafakun alai in all the books of Ahadith, sayings of the Prophet. The best dress is, is that of taqwa, that is, fear of Allah. His total obedience through cleanliness of the heart and mind. The best dress is that of taqwa, fear of Allah. His total obedience through cleanliness of the heart and mind. We are required to be addressed in accordance with Sharia, which is the dress of God fearing, abstaining the pious people, which is the dress of the God fearing, abstaining the pious people. The dress shouldn't show the parts, features of the body which are to be covered, hidden by women and men in accordance with Quran. The dress shouldn't show the parts, features of the body which are to be covered, hidden by women and men in accordance with Quran. It is forbidden to wear clothes which show pride, arrogance, or wearing clothes in a manner which shows pride and arrogance. Ubeda bin Khalid Razila states, Once I was walking in Medina, I heard a voice from behind saying, Lift your tamil. It keeps the man clean of physical as well as the inner filth. I looked back and saw Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. I, uh, um, uh, I submitted, O Prophet of Allah, it's a simple ordinary cloth. Can it have arrogance and pride? Can it have arrogance and pride? The Prophet, peace be upon him, replied, Isn't following my way necessary for you? Isn't following my way necessary for you? 
On hearing these words of the Prophet, peace be upon him, my eyes fell, my eyes fell to his temple, that is the sheet men wear uh, to cover the legs, for um, the temple, which was up to half of the calf. The Prophet's temple was up to half of the calf, calf, trimsi. The Prophet also forbore, forbore men and women very clothes, dresses that make them resemble the opposite sex. The Prophet also forbade men and women wearing, wearing clothes, dresses that make them resemble the opposite sex. In another hadith, the Prophet peace with them said, he who resembles any people, and my apologies. First, Hazrat Abu Rah states that the Prophet says, curse such a man who wear clothes like that of women, and curse such a woman who wears the clothes like that of men. Abu Hurairah Razayullah states that the Prophet, peace be upon him, curse such a man who wears clothes like that of women, and curse such a woman who wears the clothes like that of men. Abu Dawud. In another hadith, the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, he who resembles any people, he who resembles any people, uh, 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 any people uh, in dress, style, way of living, taste, morals, intellect shall be raised among, uh, uh, among those people. The Prophet said, he who resembles any people would be raised among those people. And the resemblance may be in brackets, that is the dress, style, way of living, taste, morals, intellect, etc. The Prophet, peace be upon him, strictly forbade the believers from resembling the people of other religions, societies, and cultures. I repeat, the Prophet, peace be upon him, strictly forbade, forbade the believers from resembling the people of other religions, societies, and cultures. Sunnah of the Prophet, peace be upon him, is white clothes for the men. He always wore white clothes and emphasized on men clothes that were white. At an occasion, talking about the men, the Prophet said, wear white clothes because white dress remains more clean and bright coffin for the men from it. Manners of eating. Manners of eating. Wash the hands before eating. Start after reciting the name of Allah. Eat with the right hand. Use three fingers or four, leaving the index. Eat together, preferably from the same plate or dish. Eat from your own side. Don't find faults with the food. Don't find faults with the food, excuse me, if you dislike it. Just stop eating. Eat and drink sitting. Eat and drink sitting. It is forbidden to eat or drink while standing. It is forbidden to eat or drink while standing. Avoid extremely hot food. Do not talk too much or remain absolutely quiet while, quiet while eating. Do not talk too much or remain absolutely quiet while eating. Do not smell the food unless necessary. Clean up the plate well before finishing the meals. Clean up the plate well before finishing the meals. And if a loaf of eatable fell on the floor, the Prophet, peace be upon him, would pick it up, clean it, and put it in his mouth. Finally, recite a prayer and wash your hands. The Prophet, peace be upon him, recommended many prayers, one of them being, Allahumma baraklana fihe wa atimna khairam minho. Allahumma baraklana fihe wa atimna khairam minho. One who, the experience shows of many scholars, one who recites this prayer after every meal will always keep getting the best of the foods. I repeat, one who recites this prayer after every meal will always keep getting the best of the foods.
All praises are for us. My apologies. Now, agony and grief. Agony and grief. None is free of agony and grief. None is free of agony and grief. But the believer knows that nothing can occur without the permission of Allah and his faith and fatalism that is what has happened had to happen is unshakable i repeat none is free of agony and grief but the believer knows that nothing can have occur without the permission of allah and his faith in fatalism what has happened had to happen is unshakable he can, he hasn't an iota of doubt that allah is perfect and all his decisions are perfect. He hasn't an iota of doubt that Allah is perfect and all his decisions are perfect. He doesn't blame the fate or others, but if he has to, he blames his own shortcomings for his failures. He doesn't blame the fate or others, but if he has to, he blames his own shortcomings or for his failures and he takes assistance from sabr, patience, perseverance and salah that is five time prayers to get rid over the tide, the difficult trying days and he takes assistance, <coughs> excuse me, my apology, from sabr, patience, perseverance and salah, five times prayers to get over the tide, the difficult trying days. Once the Prophet's lamp went off, he recited, To Allah we belong, and to Him we return, Inna lillahi wa inna lahi rajiun, that to Allah we belong, and to Him we return. Someone inquired, O Prophet of Allah, is the going off the lamp also a calamity? Is the going off of the lamp also a calamity? The Prophet stated, said, yes, whatever hurts a woman, faithful believer is a calamity. Whatever hurts a woman, a faithful believer is a calamity. The Prophet said, when in, when in grief, the person who tears the shirt, slaps the cheeks, shouts and wails, he is not from my ummah. The Prophet said, when in grief, the person who tears the shirt, slaps the cheeks, shouts and wails is not from my Amma, from my umma. That's all for today. Jazakallah. Please pray for me. Ex-Brigadier Mustan Sarbillah.